Yo, what's up guys, it's Jeff from Updated and today we have the third developer beta of iOS 15 available for install. So we are going to go ahead and check out what's new in beta three of iOS 15, what has been fixed from beta two, and we'll check out future release date schedules so we can determine when we should see beta four. So let's go ahead and get started. And before we do, just wanted to remind you all about the Apple Watch Series 6 month of July giveaway that's sponsored by Provado VPN. And that link is in the video description below for all of those details. Uh, just make sure you are subscribed to us on the YouTube platform and follow us on Twitter to enter and you are all set to go. Again, all of the information for that giveaway can be found in the video description down below. That's solo.to slash updated. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into some of the bug fixes that needed to be made from beta two to beta three. So first up, we have the Bluetooth connection bug that was actually only present on the re-released version of beta two. So shortly after the release of beta two, uh, Apple released the second version of that beta. And actually that version brought a lot of issues that were actually fixed from beta one and even more issues than what I was experiencing on the first version of beta two. Uh, the connection issue with Bluetooth was one of those issues, and I was also experiencing a lot of issues with using my HomePods. They just simply would not work most of the time, and you kind of had to trick them into working and getting the audio through. So overall, I'd say that connection issues seriously plagued me here in the re-release -re version of Beta 2, and um, I was less than pleased with this Beta version. Now I went down to the car after installing beta three and everything seems to be working just fine and also with my home pods as well. So hopefully that continues and we won't be experiencing these issues any longer in the next upcoming betas. Now, next up, there was a bug that I experienced in beta one, but was fixed in the first version of beta two. And then after that re-release though, um, the issue came back and it was actually the Apple TV lock screen controls, which I use a lot. The volume controls will crash the springboard completely. And unfortunately this issue has not been fixed here in beta three. So this bug still does live on. Just wanted to give you an update on that. Now, the last issue that I wanted to focus on was specific to the find my network. Now in beta one, I had a lot of issues with sharing my location with others and also sharing my ETA to certain places where I'd be meeting them there. In beta two, the first release, this issue seemed to have gone away as people were able to see my location and get updates regularly. But again, on the re-release, the problem started to come back. Now, after installing beta three here, I did check with someone and she did say that she could see my live location uh, properly and also in sharing my ETA, that person can get live results as to how far out I am and when I'm going to get to that location. So thankfully that issue is now fixed because I do use location tracking and the ETA feature quite a bit now. And obviously that's a pretty major feature within iOS. Now, lastly, I will say that I do continue to provide updates on major bugs and bug fixes. So if you have any that you want me to be testing out, please comment those down in the comment section below what you want to see. And I can potentially see if those issues are present or not in the betas. Okay, so taking a look at what is new within um, iOS 15 beta three here, if we go into settings and then onto general, and about. We obviously have a new software version. Um, it's 15 still, but we do have a new beta here and the build number is 19A5297E. Um, now, if we go farther down into this menu, we do have um, some new modem firmware that's 2.07.01, a very small change there. So nothing major, um, but just a very small change there. Now, moving on to um, something that we see here within the general menu, something totally new that we've never seen before is um, a new menu here, transfer or reset iPhone. Previously, it was just reset iPhone. Um, it just gave you options for reset, but now we actually have um, some new options here to transfer information to a new phone. So as you can see here at the top, um, it says prepare for your new iPhone. And um, basically you can just uh, transfer all of the settings, apps and everything like that from this phone to another phone and that makes it a little bit easier. Right now there's that option. You have to um, kind of like set your phone close to a phone that is um, being set up to, to allow this option. But actually now you can just go ahead and get started and now there's um, some 
added prompts to get you started for um, what to do for um, this transfer process. So once you click done, um, it will basically allow you to have the phone, um, you know, set up a new phone and um, give you that prompt. Just This is just a prompt to get you started, to give you more information about what you need to be doing. And then once you start setting up that other phone, um, it will actually go throughout that process. Um, as far as the rest of the menu, that has not really changed. There's still a reset and then erase all content and settings. So um, that's similar there. Um, so yeah, that is the new uh, reset and transfer menu within the uh, settings app within the general menu. Now, when you open up the App Store um, for the first time, there's a new prompt. And basically, it's a what's new on the App Store prompt. Um, it shows in-app events. Um, you can discover um, you know, timely events within apps and games. Um, app Store widgets. So um, you can actually have the App Store widget uh, placed onto your home screen. And then Safari extensions on iOS, there's a now like a dedicated menu for that on the App Store. Now, another prompt that came up is in the Reminders app. So um, just reminds you basically of the main features that you have within the Reminders app. Nothing really new, um, just organizing with tabs, optimizing with smart list, and um, a lot more kind of individualized um, settings that you can uh, choose from for the Reminders app. Now, the last prompt that I found was for the Notes app, and basically it's just listing all the new features within iOS 15 um, that we saw at WWDC 2021. So um, just a very, uh, these prompts are just kind of useful just to remind people, um, you know, if you're a regular user, not like myself, where you just kind of dive into all these features, just gives you a basic rundown of uh, what's new within certain apps. Now, if we go back into settings and then go to accessibility and then uh, go down to switch control, if we go down to um, the uh, switch controls for, uh, let's go ahead for head tracking and you turn this on, you actually have a lot more actions now. So Apple has added actions and I believe this was added in the second version of beta two um, that we saw a few weeks back. So um, for those of you who actually use this feature, I know there was some people that actually were looking for more head tracking movements. This is actually super useful for those who actually need and require this feature, this accessibility feature to um, use their iPhone um, or iPads. Now also in the settings app, if you go into the focus menu, there's actually um, some, some things that look a little bit different. So um, you can see here sleep focus, um, it has a new prompt there, but if we go into um, something like do not disturb, um, there's actually new prompts. So focus status is something new um, that we haven't seen before. And basically how this works is if my focus setting is on to do not disturb, sleep, driving, whatever, um, and someone messages me, you can see here that it will show Jeffrey has notifications silenced. But what's really cool is if it's like an emergency or something, they can actually notify you anyway, as you can see by the prompt at the bottom, and that will notify you. It will kind of go past that uh, focus setting. So that's really cool just in case you have like an emergency or something like that um, where people need to reach you. They can get to you still um, through that notifi notify anyway uh, prompt there at the bottom. And this is actually a handy feature that I think is going to work out for a lot of people. Um, now also these uh, two menu options here um, below the focus status, um, Apple has added some glyphs there, um, some new glyphs that look a little bit different from what we saw before, just a little bit more detail, um, kind of like identifying the home screen before what just wasn't there. So it identifies um, the glyph as like being the home screen and uh, vice versa with the lock screen. So um, just a little bit more detail within this menu, very, very small changes there within the do not disturb or focus menu. Now in Safari, things have actually been changing uh, quite a bit. So now in Safari, if you go into, um, let's say we open up a new tab and we want to type something in, that bar does no longer go to the top of the screen, which is actually super annoying. It actually stays at the bottom, so I can type in whatever I want um, at the bottom, and it's just right there. That way, when I'm typing something in, I don't actually have to reach all the way to the top to reach that. It's just right here, so I can edit anything that I want right there. So that's actually really cool. Now, something else which is really cool is I can now haptic touch that bar at the bottom and reload, I can refresh the page essentially and just access all of the, uh, these options. I don't have to like tap on that, which loads this pretty large menu. I can actually access like, essentially what it is, is a quick menu um, from haptic touch of that status bar. So that's actually a really cool and nifty feature that I really love here within beta three. 
Now, uh, one thing that I wanted to show you guys is, uh, let's go ahead and turn on a focus. Um, so do not disturb. Let's go ahead and go to our lock screen. Now on our lock screen, if we have do not disturb or any of our focus modes turned on, previously you just see this icon here, same thing as uh, what we were seeing in previous betas, but now if you long press on um, that little icon there, it will actually load up the focus menu. So I can actually shift through my personal work, sleep, whatever I want directly from the lock screen. I don't actually have to go in um, to like the, the control center here and change everything this way. Um, this menu here has now actually been brought to um, the, the home screen. And one thing about this is, which is actually very important, um, having these little icons here is kind of a hint that we may be seeing an always on display on the um, next iPhone, that being the iPhone 13. So um, do look for maybe, just maybe, an always on display, just because Apple is adding these little glyphs here um, to the lock screen, just showing us um, like a little preview of what's going on. And now they're actually, you can interact with them and load up menus, which is actually super helpful and just eliminates a few steps going into the control center. Now going into the settings app, I wanted to show you something um, that I found just, just now going through the third beta here. If you go into maps and then you go into spoken directions, there's actually a new menu here where you can have um, Siri pause your podcast. Um, you can turn that on or off when it's speaking and giving you directions. That way it's not kind of like um, going over your podcast and interrupting that. Um, you can have your directions come up when um, you can wake your phone when directions are coming up onto your phone. And then also if you're listening to let's say the radio, you can have directions come up or not. Um, this is all having to do with Siri announcements when it comes to uh, directions within the Maps app when you are using uh, Siri for those directions. Now, something that I wanted to show you here um, has to do with uh, the notifications. So if you take a look at um, the, oh, we'll go here. So if I swipe over on um, the, the uh, notification here on the left. This is running beta two on the left here. And then I swipe over on the right. You can see that the options and clear uh, menus have been uh, separated here in beta three. So before it was kind of combined and now it's actually separated so you can differentiate the two um, versus before where it was just all one and it may have been slightly confusing. Now that's differentiated here into um, entirely separate menu options there. And of course, if you want to go all the way to the left, um, that still clears all of those notifications from that notification group. Now, something else that I just found within Safari is uh, something to do with like search. So if I look for, let's say iPhone, um, you, it has like your smart options there at the top where it basically recommends websites for what you're searching. But below here, if you go into this menu now, it's not edge to edge like it was with that previous theme in iOS 14. Now it goes um, a little bit more indented into the middle and it matches kind of like the settings app where everything is just a little bit more um, kind of pushed towards Towards the middle. So this looks really cool. It's uh, rounded just like the settings app and it just looks a little bit more uniform here within Safari versus uh, you know the settings app. Now Apple still needs to work on uh, making the app store like this because it goes edge to edge in the app store. So maybe in a future beta we'll see that. But Apple has added uh, kind of like that UI change here to Safari. Um, so do expect that change here in beta three. Okay, let's move on to the performance of the CPU and GPU, and then we'll get into battery performance as well. Now, when talking about chip performance specifically, we haven't really seen the major performance jumps that we've seen in previous betas where we get these significantly better performance jumps when hopping onto the first couple of developer betas. The performance between the now three betas that have been released for iOS 15 are almost within the margin of error of each other, and there's really nothing major to report back on. So when you think about testing out the public or developer betas for iOS 15, please, please, please do not expect a major performance jump because it's simply just not going to be there. Now, moving on to battery performance, and things have been really up and down over the past few weeks. Beta 1 presented a serious issue with battery life, and I think that has a lot to do with widgets eating up a lot of power in the background. There was also a major background app refresh issue for apps, and that's likely due to apps not being updated to work with iOS 15 yet. Now, when we moved on to beta two, issues with battery life got just slightly a little bit better, but did not perform the same as what I was experiencing 
in iOS 14.6. So far in beta three in our very, very small test, it seems like battery life is about the same as in uh, the two versions of beta two, but we will report back after going through extensive testing to see if there have been improvements or not here in beta three. Quite simply put though, uh, this may be more of an issue with third party apps than anything because they haven't been updated for iOS 15 and those are typically the apps that at least for me are taking up the most battery life during my day. Now, regardless, we'll stay on top of this and report back um, on battery life so you guys can be updated on that. Okay, so let's move on to future release date schedules. And um, as I mentioned in my beta three preview video, Apple doesn't really deviate um, all too often from their typical beta release schedule uh, from years past with all of those betas. Uh, now, with that being said, I did accurately predict when beta two and beta three would come out. And with that, I think I have a pretty good idea as to when beta four should be released as well. Now, according to past history, we should see beta four in about two more weeks, putting us at a release date of July 19th to July 23rd. There's also the release dates of public betas as well now, since we already have the first public beta available to uh, public beta testers. And typically those betas are released either the same day as a developer beta or the very next. So just keep an eye out on uh, our Twitter feed or YouTube community page to see uh, those updates on when software is released, either for the developer betas or for the public betas as well. So guys, that was iOS 15 beta three and all of what you need to know about this specific release. If you have any questions whatsoever, please leave them in the comment section down below. Or if you have any further information that you want to add about beta three, you can mention it down there in the comment section as well. Now, if any of you wanted to hop onto the developer betas right now, make sure to check the link in the video description down below for more info on that. But if you want to wait until uh, the public beta, which is actually already out, you can go to beta.apple.com for more information on the public betas and how you can get those installed onto your device. Now, before you go, don't forget about the super awesome Apple Watch Series 6 giveaway by heading over to solo.to slash updated. That's a pretty awesome giveaway. You will not want to miss out. You can check on Twitter as to when those results are released. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video on the updated YouTube channel. Before you head out, make sure to get subscribed and also hit that notification bell button to stay up to date for when we publish any new content here on the channel. Also, if you want to check out some other things that we have going on, check the channel information link down below. It's solo.to slash updated. You can check out our channel memberships, our merch store, my personal Twitter account, which you should totally follow, and a link to the updated podcast where we have new episodes every single week. That podcast is called The Infinite Loop, and we talk about everything going on in the world of tech. Also, we have links to our giveaways sponsored by awesome companies like Provado VPN. So definitely check those out as well. We'll have a new one every single month. So guys, thank you again for watching today's video and we hope to see you guys in some upcoming content. But until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.